Well, thank you so much. It is such a pleasure to be here this evening. And um, I have never seen a room full of such beautiful, beautiful, and I'm, I'm going to call them dresses. I know that's wrong, but you all look absolutely lovely this evening. So um, thank you very much for the wonderful introduction. And, and most of, importantly, thank you for inviting me to speak here tonight um, to a, a group um, a room full of wonderful entrepreneurs, forward thinkers, and people who have obviously put women first. I want to congratulate the women entrepreneurs of DFW for all that you've accomplished in your first year. This is also my first year being the mayor of South Lake. I, um, up until about a week ago, I was telling everyone that I was in my honeymoon period, but it ended when everyone got their water bills because everyone became very angry about their high water bills. And I wondered what happened to the most popular mayor in town. <laughs> so it, it didn't last too long. But um, I was elected mayor just this past May. I did serve on city council as the mayor pro tem. I was first elected in 2004, so had a little bit of experience um, being on city council. But I will tell you that I chuckle when I look back and um, to what I thought the job of being mayor was all about. Um, I don't. I'm not disparaging women when I say this, but I think you'll understand what I mean. That that sometimes when a guy has a job, we think, I could do that better. And so when I was on city council, the, the male mayors that I served, I always thought, oh, I can do that. That's not so hard. I bet if I had that job, it would be easy. Well, as soon as I was elected, I found out that it was a really hard job. And the reason it looked so easy is because those gentlemen that served as mayor before me did such, such an excellent job. And I do always say that, you know, when you're on the outside looking up, doesn't it always look a lot easier? So the step from council to mayor was a huge step for me. Um, and it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't that it was a learning curve. It wasn't that it was so much more responsibility or even living up to all the campaign promises. It was that making that choice to step up and be a leader. And it was a really, you know, campaigns are hard fought. That's probably the most difficult thing about governance. It's not doing the actual job when you get it. It's being, you know, having the nerve to step up and get the job and then running a campaign. That's the toughest part of it. But I made the choice to step up, not just to be the mayor, but also to be the leader of my community and all that came with that. And a leader not just in the eyes of the folks that elected me, but even more importantly, a leader in the eyes of the folks that didn't elect, vote for me. So this evening I've been asked to speak to you about women and governance and of course economic development that comes out of that. But I would tell you that government, uh, governance actually really starts with leadership. So I would like to take you back in time and share a little bit with you about my style of leadership. And it really started with my very first job out of college. I was hired as a management trainee for a company that was at the time called Stouffer Hotels. Uh, several years ago, they were sold to Renaissance, but back in 1979, when I came out of college, I joined Stouffer's Hotels as, um, as I always like to say, I came in through the basement door, not even the lobby, the basement door. My first job was managing the graveyard shift of the Umbrella Cafe in Stouffer's downtown Cincinnati Hotel. It was the only 24-hour restaurant in the city of Cincinnati at the time. So you can only imagine what the crowds were late at night after a baseball game. It was a really tough start. I found out later that it was the job in the company that nobody wanted. But I learned some of the most important lessons about leadership in that job without even realizing it. I learned to never discount the contribution that anyone around me made to the ultimate success of every single night in that restaurant. I helped my employees pour coffee, butter toast, bust tables, wash dishes, and mop dirty floors. Whatever it took to get the job done. You know, you realize really quickly the importance of a dishwasher when one quits on you. And you realize just how much a hostess has to hustle when yours calls in sick. 
I learned a lot of really important things from those waitresses, busboys, line cooks, and dishwashers. I learned what it feels to sometimes be the low man on the totem pole. I learned that even somebody at the bottom of the totem pole can make a huge difference to customers and to fellow employees. I ended up absolutely loving the hotel business, and I opened hotels all over the country for 14 years. It is an industry of people, relationships, parties, and events. The perfect place to hone what would someday become my leadership style. And to all of you working this event tonight, I've been there with you, and you all do an excellent job. Now, I'll tell you, I think the key to effective leadership, whether it's family leadership, business leadership, or political leadership, is to unlock other people's possibilities, find their potential, to be able to seize the possibilities, bring people together, and make things happen. At that Cincinnati hotel, it wasn't about title or position at the restaurant. Believe me, having the title manager on my name tag was no help when there were 60 people standing in line that wanted a table at 2 a.m. in the morning. I was 22 years old and thought that if you sat in a big office and had a brass nameplate and lots of people coming in and asking you questions and giving out lots of instructions, that you were a leader. It's ironic as I look back, but in the 18 months that I managed that graveyard shift, I never once met the general manager of that hotel. He went home every night before I came to work, and I went home in the morning before he came in. How little effort he made to meet the folks low on the totem pole. And still to this very day, that has made a huge impression on me. I guarantee you in my business life and in my governing life, I know everybody who does anything to help me be successful. That job taught me that there are lots of people with big positions that do not leave. And there are also many people with no position or title that lead us every day. Leadership in government works very much like leadership in, private, in the private sector, but I will tell you, being the owner of a business and also being the mayor, there is one very, very big difference. In government, there is never any independent decision made. Sometimes it'll make you crazy. Whether you're part of the governing body or a member of city staff, you have layers and layers in the decision-making process. Rather than dealing with employees, you are dealing with a combination of the citizens and their needs that will be successful long term and bring value to our lifestyle in South Lake. We worry about changing demographics and the economic health of this entire metropolitan area. You know, the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex is the fastest growing metropolitan area in the United States of America. And the Dallas Fort Worth Airport is all ready to take over the fourth as the fourth busiest airport in the world. And South Lake is right in the middle of all of it. I will tell you that no matter what I am working on, even writing this speech for tonight, that I always include the smartest people in anything that I'm trying to figure out. I take advantage of the wealth of the successful business leaders in South Lake. I am never afraid to pick up the phone and ask people for help that has served me well in business and that will serve me well in government. Our city operates with a strategic plan, not unlike what you would want to have for your own company. We look out 15 years. Right now we're operating off of a plan called 2030. As in my company and as is mayor, we have a plan and every decision ties back to that plan. We always need to know where we're going. Not to say we don't make changes along the way, but we always keep the future at the table with us whenever we make a decision. As mayor, I meet with my constituents every day. It can be in a formal sitting meeting this morning in Tom Thumb at 7.30 in the morning, or speaking at lovely gatherings and events like this one. 
I live, I work, and I govern in Southlake. So I'm constantly aware of all the people that I come in contact with, whether it's the waitress at a restaurant where I'm having lunch with girlfriends, whether it was the clerk this morning in the uh, grocery store where I went grocery shopping, whether it's the cashier, whether it's the clerk, all of the people that I come in contact with need to see me as a leader. I also have to be seen as a leader by my fellow council members, city staff, and the business community. Everyone needs to feel that they have a seat at my table, that they have an opinion that's valued, and that their input is listened to. Very much like those employees in that 24-hour restaurant in Cincinnati, I will tell you that my title mayor should not impress anybody. It's the job that I do as mayor. In closing, I'll tell you that while, yes, I'm the first female mayor in Southlake, I think it's more interesting that I have an all-male, thank, thank you. I actually think it's more interesting that I have an all-male city council. <laughs> My husband told me after my first meeting, he watched it on TV, he said, you have to quit saying gentlemen all the time. Gentlemen, what would you like to do? I said, well, number one, they're all men, and number two, they're all gentlemen, so I'm very happy to call them gentlemen. But the point is that I believe that leadership is a human quality. It's not a male or female quality, but I do think that we need more women as leaders in government. I think we have so many challenges now not just in our communities, but also in our companies and also in our country and in the world for that matter, that we need as many leaders as we can get. People who are willing to step forward and make a positive difference. I told you that the hardest thing about being mayor was running the campaign. And why is that? Because it's really hard to put yourself out there and know that people are judging you, whether it's a new business idea whether it's your platform, it's really tough when you know you're walking into a room and people are making a decision whether they support you or not. Sometimes it's very uncomfortable to step out of the group and to challenge the status quo, but there have to be people willing to put their personal comfort aside and stand up for the greater good. Sometimes you just have to make the choice to lead. I will say that moms in particular have a natural talent for seeing a job that isn't getting done, and what do we do? We jump in and we do it. How many of you have said, I have got to learn to say no? But we never do. We're always available, and we're always happy to help. When there is a task that has to be done, just call. This is a skill that has served me well as in government. I mean, really, it's PTO Mom 101 all over again. But it always comes down to that choice to lead. I ran for mayor because I saw a community that needed me, that needed volunteers. And I would tell, I'll tell you, I already had a full-time job. I co-own a company with my father. I have three children. I have a husband, two dogs. <laughs> But I'm a mom, and at the end of the day, I knew I could do the job, and I didn't want to say no. So I jumped in, no regrets, and it's events like this tonight that make me very glad that I did. I made the choice, the choice to leave. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Laura Hill, for the inspiring speech. I think many of us are uh, mothers, have children, and um, we wanted to uh, present this plaque of appreciation and understand what a tough job it is to juggle so many things at once. <laughs> Mayor Hill, this is a gift for all. Um, Peyton Thomas Salon in South Lake, just for you. Yeah.